Hi friends, welcome. This is Barb Pask. I'm going to uh, do a study tonight. I'm going to practice, uh, do a little practice, I guess I should call it. Um, over the years I've done a lot of things. I uh, chair a group and sometimes I'll take things in in the group and, um, you know, we'll do things. Um, some of the things I've done, and some of the things I've done in workshops too, like I've done limited stroke paintings where you have so many strokes to do a painting. I've done what they call quick studies. I have some DVDs by Craig Nelson. That is kind of his claim to fame. And you have a limited time to do a painting. Um, the limited strokes paintings, I think the way they help you is um, makes you think more about your strokes. You know, you've got to uh, get as far as you can with the stroke. The strokes have to be important and they have to matter. You've got to lay down the correct strokes. Um, it's, again, it's an exercise. Um, quick studies, I think, are fun and good. Um, the last time we did it with my group, I think I did a 15-minute painting, a half an hour, and a 45. I believe that's what I personally did. And I chose um, photographs to paint from that got a little more difficult as I had more time. In the end, I have to say the simple landscape that I chose for the 15-minute painting was probably my favorite of the three. It felt fresh and the colors were really nice. Um, so it, a lot of this stuff, maybe you won't use it in your day-to-day -day painting. It's, it's fun and it's, it's good practice. The lim the, what we're going to do today is a one-stroke painting. And I've done this before. Um, years ago, Carol Marine was, if you know who she is, she and her husband started Daily Paintworks a very popular website where they sell art. And um, it was one of the things that she really talked about was uh, one stroke painting. And I did try this with my group one time too, but the idea is um, if you paint an object that you lay down the correct stroke. I'm going to do a little more of a detailed sketch before I get started here. I'm going to just do a simple object. I'm going to do an apple. I'll show it to you. Um, and I have a pair in here too, but we may only do one. We'll see. Um, but the idea is to lay down the correct color and value. You know, load your brush. Say, say you've got your apple and this color and value to lay it down the correct color and value in that area, for example. If it isn't right, she suggests you wipe it off and reapply. Um, I think the idea behind one stroke is especially if you're a person where you your paintings are overworked and muddy um, I think probably you get a looser painting um, cleaner colors you know it's not the way I work you know you watch me work um, I do feel as though part of what I do when I paint too is I'm 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 drawing I do a very simple sketch. Some people do a very precise sketch and they're kind of, you know, filling in the object, which is fine. Sometimes I find though that you can get too particular and maybe too tight if you're doing that. Um, but if you're going to do this, I think you do need more of a, a, a sketch that's pretty accurate. We're going to sketch it on with pencil. Um, again, for me, I, my concern is the finished painting. And it is, a, to me, that is the biggest concern. That's when you're finished with your painting, no matter how you got there, that's what a potential client sees, is your finished painting. No matter what your process is, you want to enjoy your process. Um, I, you know, get it on, but I feel like in the end, for me, again, the finished painting is the important thing. I feel like my finished paintings are accurate when they're finished and I feel like the final strokes that I lay on, I keep saying that over and over, are, are the most important strokes. So you want, you know, clean color. Your, your finished strokes should be clean and accurate. And that's the time again, I think, to show off some paint. Um, some of the issue depends on the surface you paint on too. This is a um, cotton art panel by seven again but it depends on the surface you paint on I find if I paint on stretch canvas cotton stretch canvas 
it's difficult to cover sometimes and you almost have to work it into the tooth of the canvas. So again, it depends. I'm going to work tonight, I'm going to use a, a rosemary ivory, which is more like a bristle, bit of a stiffer brush. So my plan is to pick up more paint. So hopefully I can get this panel covered with a stroke, we'll see. So I'm going to look through my view catcher for a 5 by 7 I did that a, a little bit ago and decided I wanted to go sideways. I'm still learning this tripod and it's a little difficult to adjust you up and down, but I have a, I'll show you at the end. It's just an apple. I set an apple over here. It's part red, part green, and the shadow is going to be part of my composition. I like that a lot. So again, and like I said, I carried a pair in too. We'll decide. And this, you know, this is just for practice again. So I would, I prefer not to dead center when I have one object. I prefer for it to be offset. And again, the shadow is going to be part of, part of our composition. So we'll try to keep that apple over this way. You know, and it's an apple. Who's to say what this apple looks like? As far as sketching, um, some people use straight lines, and the reason for that being is if I'm going from here to here, then I look again, and I maybe go from here to here, whereas if I do this, I'm not looking at the apple probably as I'm sketching. So you can use straight lines, and then you can come back and, you know, round them off. And we can even kind of sketch in the darker, lighter areas of, of the apple, too, while we're at it. But anyway, you know, it's just, just a practice, something fun to do, and uh, try things, you know, and it, uh, you may incorporate some of it into your practice. Maybe you won't. This is not a real apple, so it's kind of got a wimpy stem, but we can, we can kind of do what we want. Anyway, very light area here. I say it's green over here. Got a nice highlight. It's a bit uh, lighter over here. And you can kind of see into it, which is nice. And then I've got a dark screen behind it. You know, and we may or maybe won't paint the background even. We'll see. But our, our goal here will be to lay it down in one stroke, and if I don't get it right, I'm going to wipe it off. Um, I did pre-mix some color here. Let me stand up and see if I can show you. Excuse my box, it's a mess and it needs cleaned out. While I'm up here, I'll show you the apple. We've got a lot of light on it, but it's uh, green and it's just an apple. <laughs> Here's my painting box. I mixed, if you look, over here, I mixed a red and then more of an orangey red and a darker red there. So to give myself some values and then the green and more of a yellow green. So just to make it easier, you know, give myself some options. All right, now let's see if we can get you back where you can see. Maybe, maybe. Wait a minute, let me sit down. I said this is one of the things Carol Marine did. Um, she's she's very painterly, maybe too painterly for me. Um, you can check her out. Um, some people, their work to me almost feels like a block in that they they don't take it any further than that. I'm trying to get you out of my way, but yet so you can see. Okay. So we're going to start up in this area where I have that uh, orangey or red, and I'm going to try to scoop up enough. I've got a good amount on there, so we can lay it in one color, one stroke. I mean, we'll see how it goes. See, I'm, now I've got to push that around, and I got enough paint on here. I can do the stroke next to it too. You know, and who's to say this is right or wrong? You know, I, I watched, I've been to demos with some very good artists that um, they'll paint and then they have soft brushes and they 
blend. They paint and they blend. So, you know, again, you figure out what works for you. I'm not saying, but it's a fun practice, you know. It definitely, I think, is it definitely beneficial if you're a person that tends to overwork and you end up with a lot of muddy colors in the end. I definitely think it would be beneficial for you. See, and we got to color, cover the panel too. That would be one advantage, I guess, to toning. You wouldn't be as concerned about covering the panel. And this is a hard panel. This is easier to cover than some surfaces. And we'll see how this looks in the end. You know, I may find that I need, I feel like I want to blend it. I went over that twice, not intentionally necessarily, but for coverage. We'll try to do one. We'll try to leave, just see what happens. We'll try to leave it alone. With premixing colors like this, um, you can see that the process, see I didn't get coverage, you can see that the process would go pretty quick. See, I didn't get coverage. And I'm trying to pick up more paint because this is a, like I said, this is kind of like a bristle. I, for one, I'm, I mean, some artists don't care. You look, I've said this before, you look at their work and when you get up close, you see all kinds of white canvas showing, but I don't really like that myself. All right, I'm trying to look at what I got over there. Again, it's fun. I know I did that twice, but I'm, I'm watching myself, but I'm pushing it. I'm getting coverage, too. Um, Inside the little hole, there is pretty light in the back. Yeah, I did a uh, workshop, I mentioned this before, with, um, hell, I forgot her name, Sarah Sedwick last year, and we did, uh, we did all kinds of interesting things. We, you know, we painted with values, only black and white, gray values. Um, we. We did, uh, she gave us so many strokes to do a painting. See, I don't always get the coverage I want, and maybe it's because I don't have enough paint on my brush. It's darker on that right side and green. See, I don't get full coverage. So what do you have to do? I have to go back and uh, Chuck Marshall is a um, sometimes local artist. He's a friend of mine, a uh, very, very good painter. Look him up, Chuck Marshall. Um, I've watched a lot of his demos over the years. And uh, he's a very, especially on his top layer when he's laying his finishing strokes, he's a very gentle hand. He's, he's nice to watch, very gentle touch. He's just barely caressing the canvas with some of those top strokes. Now see, I can see that this value up here is too dark, so we'll wipe it off. And you may not think this is beneficial, but again, it's something to consider trying, especially if um, you feel you're overworking paintings and uh, again, having muddy colors. Now see, to look at this, I'm not wild about the way this looks. Um, Yeah, 
you know, my tendency would be to work this in more and then lay on more colors as I need them. But let's use a real gentle touch and just um, do a little blending. And I like, you know, we're kind of laying the strokes in the direction in the direction of the apple this way too. See there, we've done a little blending, and I, I like that better. The, the colors are still clean and. Uh, I'm looking at the shape of the apple too, adjusting that. See this feels dark to me also, a little darker than it is. You know, what do we think of that? It's okay. I'm doing some blending now. I'm just playing around, trying some things. course. That's a pretty big brush I'm working with too. A um, bit of a darker area there. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll just move forward and we'll lay a shadow in. I obviously do not have the stem in yet. Okay, I'm going to go up here to this darker area a little bit and uh, Check out my website if you're new to my channel. I meant to post it here, um, but it's in the description box. And uh, subscribe if you haven't, please. And I love your comments. And the shadow is always, you need to just look to see, but the shadow is always darkest up close to the object and lightens up as it gets away. I'm going to dip into a tiny bit of water. These are water mixable oils. And this is basically one color, so I am scrubbing it on to get coverage. It don't matter. But we can go back. You know, that's, that's kind of how I work. I get the canvas covered. Again, because I don't do a real particular drawing, I get the canvas covered, and I'm always adjusting as I paint. Then I come back, and I look at everything again and adjust it where I need to. 
That's how I work. But again, it's always fun to do these exercises and try some things you haven't done or haven't done in a while, you know. I know a woman, very good artist, that um, she uh, would paint very large and she a lot of times would start with a rag paper towel and uh, just block everything in with a paper towel just to get the canvas covered. You know, this is a practice again. I may paint over this canvas at some point. We'll see. Get a tiny bit of water. shape of this too. Kind of flattens out on the top. You know, just because my background ends there doesn't mean I can't bring it down a little bit, you know, if I prefer it. And I like the idea of pulling colors back and forth, like, um, you know, pull that background color down into foreground and back and forth. I mean, I, li I like that. I want it to work together. So it's a pretty little clean apple, don't you think? Clean colors and uh, I'm, I'm just looking at the shape of it again. Again, I'm one that kind of draws as I paint, so now I don't want the apple to feel like it's half green and half red necessarily either, so we're going to pull some of this red over this way a little bit. Okay. You know, and this could always be the way you start and then from there I mean, this is not going to work for every object. If you're doing a vase, it's got a pattern all over it. You know, you're probably going to come back and lay your pattern on top. That's what I would do. I think it works really well for simpler objects. So let's put some kind of stem in there. Okay, I feel as though inside there though, um, right back in here, here, it needs to be lighter for that stem to show. And this is a big brush. It's got a goofy little stem. Like I said, it's not a real apple, so. I told you, I think, oh, I should have dug it out last time. I was talking about the workshop with Nancy Frank, and she would do, uh, I'm trying to think how she did them. She would like wiggle and then pull in for the stem. It was something very simple. Now see, that's not gonna show quite obviously. Yeah, it's not working. The stem would be catching light, wouldn't it? Let's try um,
So we've been at that 25 minutes. I like it fine, you know. Um, I'm, I'm feeling though, I'm seeing, see, I'm seeing some of that canvas through over here. I'm going to darken this edge. Like I said, it's pretty and it's clean. Um, also, when you do saturated colors, if you tend to, if you do a gray background, I think it makes those saturated colors pop more. So they'll, they'll read more vibrant when you do gray around them. You know, so how would I have painted it different? I, I, that's something I like to do. I pulled out a little stroke there. I'll show it to you. Let me get you in front of it. It's a nice, juicy, clean apple. It's fine. You know, how would I have painted it normally? Um, I might have blended it around more. Um, I think it still would have come out nice. I know this is difficult. It's hard to lower this one. But I think it still would have come out nice. Would have felt like an apple. Like I said, I know, I know some fine artists that uh, keep a soft brush with them. And they, they blend as they go, and who's to say? I mean, as long as you don't overblend, I think, and work your colors together and lose, lose your colors and your values, I think that works fine. So, all right, this was a quickie. Let's just do a quickie tonight. Like I said, I brought a pair in. I could do that too, but nothing wrong with doing a short one for a change. So, again, something to consider trying. If, uh, again, if you're a person that maybe you're struggling with good clean colors consider trying this maybe or just try for the heck of it you know again i just thought it was something to do or try um limited strokes that's another one or set a timer and paint uh, you'd be surprised how nicely some of those can turn out you know give yourself 15 minutes use a big brush and uh, maybe a lot of paint but they can turn out real nice all right, thanks for joining me. Please remember to subscribe and check out my website and watch for me next time. All right, have a nice evening. Good night.